The game genres which give indie developers the best chance of success on Steam are open world survival games, building, simulation, management and horror titles. So if you just wanted to know the answer to the question in the title, there you go. But if you want to understand the data and market research behind that conclusion, what specific genres you should actually avoid making if you want to turn a profit, and what the reasons behind these market trends are, then that's what's going to be in the rest of the video. To try and figure out what the most popular games on Steam are, I downloaded a dataset that I found online that was created by scraping various data sources together from Steam's API as well as Steam Spy and Metacritic to build a database of over 90,000 Steam games. The copy of the data I found is a few months old, meaning it doesn't tell the full story of last year, but it's still fairly recent. The first thing I wanted to do is find out what genres are the most popular, and I used Steam tags to do this. I removed all the tags that were things like single player, multiplayer, and has Steam achievements from the data set, and focused only on the ones that were actual gameplay genres like FPS, platformers, simulation, and so on. Before I go any further, I should point out that the games on Steam have multiple tags, and as such, games will appear in the following charts more than once due to being tagged with multiple genres. The first chart shows the total number of games released with each genre tag. So as you can see, the genres with the most entries are strategy, simulation, RPG, platformer and puzzle. But this shows the games that Steam developers are releasing, not necessarily the games that people are buying, and that's what we really want to know. The dataset doesn't have sales figures of these games, companies tend not to release exact sales numbers, but we can make a guess at popularity using the total number of ratings, both positive and negative, a game received because this is public information and reviewers will obviously be a proportion of the overall user base. This graph shows those same genre tags, this time sorted by what percentage of games with that tag got more than 500 ratings. The green bars represent the number of games released as before, while the blue line represents the percentage of games that got over 500 reviews. Why 500? Ultimately it's an arbitrary number, but I think it's fair to say a game with 500 reviews got at least some attraction, and you've got to draw the line somewhere. MMOs ranked highest, which makes sense seeing as there aren't very many of them, and they are mostly the domain of large companies with big marketing budgets anyway. What's more interesting are the genres after that that include building, dating sim, real-time strategy, FPS and management. You want to be making a game in a genre that's on the left side of the chart where a higher proportion of games are successful, and ideally in a genre with lower total releases or lower competition. So farming simulators look like a decent choice. A fairly high proportion of games get more than 500 ratings, and there isn't much supply compared to something like FPS games, which is a popular genre filled with stiff competition. VR is arguably the poorest genre to choose. It's one with a fairly large number of releases, low success rates, and it's very technically complex to boot. 3D platformers, puzzle platformers, top-down shooters, and arena shooters also seem to have low success rates. What this graph ultimately tells us is that there's a disconnect between the types of games Steam developers are making and the types of games that actually sell well. Platformers and puzzle games are oversaturated according to this chart. Developers like making them, but this data suggests that there isn't as much demand as there is supply. You could say the same thing about strategy and simulation, but this is one instance where it's important to remember that games on here have more than one Steam tag. Specific types of strategy or simulation, like management or building, usually appear at the higher end of the discoverability scale. RPGs, FPS games and horror games are also reasonably popular, and this data suggests that making a metroidvania style platformer is a much better idea than a traditional one. There's less supply and seemingly higher demand for games with that tag, which should make it easier for developers to stand out. In their 2024 report, VG Insights reported that indie games were continuing to see growth despite the slowdown of the overall market, but that a lot of this growth was driven by Pal World and Black Myth Wukong, which if you ask me is only indie on a technicality to begin with. Pal World specifically is a classic example of an open world survival crafting style of game that has been very popular on Steam recently and shows no signs of going away anytime soon. Chris Sokovsky of HowToMarketAGame.com published an article at the end of last year called What Are Crafty Buildy Simulation Strategy Games that in my opinion sheds a lot of light on the reasons behind this data. In this article Zukovsky mentions three broad categories, which he calls meta-genres, of successful game. The first is live service multiplayer games, like Counter-Strike, Dota, MMOs, 
These games pose challenges for indies for obvious reasons. This is a market space dominated by a very small number of absolute titans and a multiplayer game will be dead on arrival without other players which is a huge problem. The second category is going around games where the player goes around between pieces of high quality authored content. This includes typical single player action games and RPGs. These pose problems for indies due to scope, they simply don't have the budget to create 40 hours of high quality handcrafted content, which is what customers will expect, like AAA studios do. And finally, crafty buildy simulation strategy games, things like city builders, survival games, roguelites and farming simulators all fit into this category. This style of game has also been described as infinite unique situation generators by Jason Rohrer and it works because it allows indies to use procedural generation algorithms, deep gameplay systems and addictive progression loops to create a large amount of content whilst keeping project scope realistic. Common examples of crafty builder games include Stardew Valley, Subnautica and Manoboards. The article lists way more but I'm not going to go into them all in the interest of time. A link is in the description below if you want to check it out. To investigate this further, I collected a list using Steam charts of the top 100 games on Steam today, which by the time this video comes out is a few days ago, filtered out which games were not indie games, and then added a single genre to each one. Admittedly, this logic relies on my own personal biases and a lot of quick googling, so it's probably not perfect. Of the top 100 games on Steam, I found 26 of them to be indie titles, and of those 26, Eight were open world survival craft games like Terraria or Valheim, two simulation strategy games, two deck builders, two were Satisfactory and Factorio that I just grouped together as builder games, one farming simulator which unsurprisingly is Stardew Valley, and one roguelite, making a total of 16 of the 26 indie games in the top 100 right now crafty buildy or unique situation generator games. Of those that weren't, three are idle games including Banana, one was a truck simulator and one was Crab Game which I guess has popularity due to being um, inspired by a popular TV series. What's also notable about this is what isn't there. There are no indie racing games, pixel platformers or VR games on this list which isn't to say that those can't be successful or have decent sized player bases outside of the top 100, just that they are less likely to attract a larger audience. If we step back and look at the big picture, not just strictly indie games, what we seem to see is a demand for games that have large amounts of repeatable content, deep and engaging gameplay systems that often produce unique situations, and perhaps most importantly, a focus on long-term progression systems. Subnautica has you building bases and gradually progressing through its tech tree, Counter-Strike has both custom weapon skins to unlock and competitive ranks to progress through, not to mention the long-term progression of your own skill in and of itself. And when it comes to RPGs, a very popular genre on Steam, character progression is arguably the main focus of the entire game. As much as I personally am not a huge fan of the modern trend to bolt progression systems onto action games that don't really need them, the market trends are clear. The data shows that players really, really like things with meaningful long-term progression attached to them. This also goes some way to explaining the popularity of idle games which are often nothing but long-term progression systems. So what about the outliers, pixel platformers like Celeste that did really well? The short answer to this is that games like that are very rare, and when they do come they're often created by experienced, committed developers who are very technically competent. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you make a fairly standard pixel platformer that's just decent, Chances are it's not going to sell well because it's competing for a more limited player base in a more saturated market. So in summary, the top genres for indie games are open world survival and crafting, building and simulation games, and horror games. FPS and RPGs are also popular on Steam, but these likely require more content to succeed, making them a challenge for small indie teams. The main genres to avoid are platformers in general, but especially puzzle platformers, VR, shoot 'em ups and arena shooters. When deciding what type of game you should make, the best place to look is where your team's skill set overlaps with the market's demands to give yourselves the best competitive advantage. For example, if you're a solo developer who's skilled at programming, making a roguelite that uses procedurally generated levels might be a good fit because this is a genre that has market demand and is something you could make that utilises your programming skill. 
On the other hand, if you have an exceptional writer on the team, creating a horror title with an engrossing story could be your niche. Horror games sell and players don't expect them to be as long as something like an RPG. Also, it goes without saying that this video is based on the commercial viability of different types of game. So if you don't care about trying to make money off your game, by all means just make whatever type of game you want to make. So I hope you found this to be useful if you're an aspiring indie developer or just interested in the trends of different games on Steam. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video because it helps the channel out and have a nice day.